Hello and welcome to this video, my name is Barry Beckham. This video is just one in a group of videos under the heading of Presentation. Changing an image so it looks like a jigsaw with maybe a few pieces missing or maybe a few pieces moved is a great presentation effect and as always there are a few ways to do this. As you can see here I have opened up Photoshop and also an image as well. The image is higher resolution and the aspect ratio is 3-2 which is typical of what we normally see from our SLRs. Now I've opened up Photoshop's bridge here to show you what I suppose we would call textures. I've always called them textures in the past but you can see what I've got. First of all I'll draw your attention to the fact that these are all low resolution so they're not going to match very well with the image I have on screen but I think we can make them fit pretty well. And you can see I've got 8 pieces, 28 pieces, 60 pieces, 84, 120 or a massive 180. Now there would be quite a bit of work involved in cutting out 180 pieces but generally speaking we don't need to do that so I'm going to pick up this one which is in the middle here 60 pieces I'm going to double click this to open it up into Photoshop now once I have it on screen I'm going to drag the tab from the top left now with the move tool selected from the top of the toolbar I'll click drag and drop my jigsaw puzzle into my picture now you can quite clearly see the difference in resolution but I think we can bridge the gap so to speak I'm going to hit Control T that's the free transform tool we'll find in the edit menu you'll notice a bounding box appears around the outer edge with a series of toggles I'm going to hold my shift key drag the right to the right the left to the left well you can see the procedure here once I get it to the bottom there I'll hit the enter key or hit the tick in the top center of the screen to commit that change so you can see the artwork doesn't seem to have lost any quality by taking it from that small size to quite a large size so the object of the exercise here is to apply this jigsaw layer to the landscape beneath and perhaps we can cut out one or two pieces and I'm thinking perhaps we'll cut out one or two around the roadway and let those pieces spill out onto a border well we don't yet have a border so let's create that first I'm going to go to my background here and just remove the lock by clicking that remember that just separates the image from the canvas beneath and there we can see it I then need to go to image canvas size and I'm going to tick the relative box so I can say to Photoshop via this panel just add on a certain amount of canvas and I'm going to work in percentage now I'm not sure exactly how much I want so it doesn't matter if I've got too much I can always crop it back if I haven't got enough I can add more but I'm going to start with 30% on the width, a little more on the height because of the fact it's narrower in height. I'll click OK to that and then I'll hit Control 0 to fit that on screen. That doesn't look too bad. What we're going to do then is to go back to our textured layer here, the jigsaw, turn it back on. Because what I'd like to do is to cut out one or two pieces from the bottom right corner. Now I don't think it's going to be much of a problem, maybe one, two, three, four, five, but we're all going to choose something slightly different. Now if I'm going to select one or two of those jigsaw puzzle pieces on the bottom right, I think I'd like to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to use shortcut keys for this, but you can go over to the toolbox of course and pick up the zoom, but control and spacebar any tool that you currently have selected and on the bottom right piece you can see I've got the move tool soon as I press those two keys control space we get the zoom in plus mode that allows me to click and drag and when I release those two tools well you can see we're back to the move tool 
but what we want is the magic wand tool now that also has a shortcut we can hit the W key for that but I want to go up to the top left and I want to also click this option which adds one selection to another so as I click into that jigsaw puzzle piece you can see I've got a little bit of a problem here I've got a few areas where it's not quite selecting the entire piece probably due to the fact that I've enlarged it quite a bit so I'll just click into that area and you can see that's made a better job of it so I'm reasonably happy with that so with the selection made I need to change my selection from the jigsaw puzzle pieces to the picture itself so let's turn this one off we don't have to do this but you'll see it better there you can see the selection I'll select my jigsaw now I need to hit Control X to cut that and then Control V to paste it both those commands you'll find in the edit menu so Control X Control V now moving that jigsaw puzzle piece away you can see I haven't made a brilliant start here I've got a little bit left in the bottom corner I'm not going to worry too much about that it's located on this layer here because I can just take it away with the eraser or a selection so let's do that very quickly let me just go to my eraser tool we'll do this very quick and easy I'll drop the brush size down not up as I've just hit the wrong key down to something like that I'm looking up at the top left of the screen I can see the tool is set with an opacity of 100% and a flow of 100% so if I click at the top hold the shift key click on the corner that's gone and to the left and that's gone and I've got a little bit left so I'll just go back over that again but you can soon see we can easily get rid of that now let's go back to our jigsaw puzzle piece and I suppose to get a feel for this I should hit control zero to fit this on screen because what I want to do is to have these pieces tumbling off the edge now they don't look very nice at the moment because they've got no shape to them so let me zoom in a little bit and let's add some let's go to that jigsaw puzzle piece we cut out bring up our effects from the bottom of the screen here let me move that out of the way I want to choose bevel and emboss and what I need to do is to add a bit of shape here now we're working on a high res image so you can see that I can make the shape deeper or not let's try using I'm going to put my cursor in the box there I'm going to use the up and down arrows because I can judge it better by just using the up arrow if I start let's say down at something like four or five now I can just look at the jigsaw puzzle piece and I can increase that without what worrying about what I'm looking at in the layer style I can just look at the jigsaw puzzle piece and when I'm happy with that I can say okay around 20 seems to be about right I'm gonna go over to the bottom left and add a little drop shadow too now we need to adjust this as well I think let's drag these out a little bit you can see the drop shadow around the edge of the puzzle piece we don't want that to be too much but it just gives the piece a little bit of a 3d look let's click OK to that we can change these at any time but if we're only going to cut out three or four pieces it's not a great problem to do that but if we were cutting out many more then we want to try to get the first one right so when we add it to the other pieces everything works well now we can also apply these effects to the image at the bottom to give that a bit of shape too but let's cut out one or two other pieces first and really it's just a repeat of what we've just done let's go back to the layers and think about what we're doing we need to make a selection of another piece let's select the piece that's immediately to the left of the one I've just taken so the first thing I need to do is to turn on and select my jigsaw layer I need to pick up my magic wand so I'll use the W key for that I'll click into the edge and right near the edge so I make sure I get a good selection and when I've got the selection I can cut it out now there's one other option that we can consider here which I didn't do here 
we can soften the edge of the selection just a little bit. If you would like to do that, go to Select and Mask, and over here in the feather, I would probably put in something like 0.5, so it's virtually half a pixel. It just smooths the edge a little bit, so have a look at both before you commit the work you're about to do. But now of course I've got to go back and reselect the image because I want to use the selection I've made on the jigsaw but I want to use it from the image. So once again I'll turn that layer off, I'll select the base layer and again I can hit Ctrl J and sorry Ctrl X and Ctrl V. Now we can see here it's going to leave a little bit to be desired. Well let's have a look at what happens. Control X and Control V. Let me just move that one away and I'll go back to my image at the bottom of the stack. I'll go back to my eraser tool and I'll quickly take away that edge. Now that edge is being caused because we're using artwork that I've provided that was probably a little bit too small and because we've increased the size it's leaving this little gap so it's giving us just a little bit of extra work to do two things to say on that we're only going to work with a couple of pieces here so it's no great shakes and I've got another system coming up a little bit later on which works in a completely different way to this now all we've got to do now is a repetition of exactly what we did with the first piece so if I go ahead I'm going to take out just one or two more pieces and let them spill out around the bottom of the frame and I'm going to use exactly the same techniques as we've just used. Well there you can see I've got five pieces cut out and I've just increased the width of the canvas around the outer edge just a little bit. Now remember with the move tool selected from the top left of the toolbox we can select any of these jigsaw puzzle pieces pretty easily by holding the control key and just clicking the piece and you'll notice that piece was selected and I can move it if I want to click the one we added the edge effects to I can hold the control key and click and now I can move that we'll give these a little bit of rotation in a moment but this little technique allows us to move the jigsaw puzzles pieces around the frame but what we need to do first then is if we're happy with the effect we've created here we need to apply it to the other pieces so I'm going to tuck these away but then I'm going to hold my alt key and drag them from one piece to another I'll tuck them away to keep the layers looking a bit more presentable but that's all it's doing nothing else so there we've got a little bit of body to all of the pieces that we've cut out but we could do with the same on the base image too so let's continue that with alt click and drag the effects now you can see the jigsaw puzzle itself has got quite a nice effect here now so we're not looking at that transparent area around the edge let's go back to the layers let's tuck the effects for the main image into the layer itself and apply a new blank layer I'm going to drag that right to the bottom of the stack because I'm going to flood that with color. Now if you look over to the color picker by chance or from the last project I was working on I seem to have a neutral gray so just for a moment I'll use that and the shortcut keys to flood our foreground color which is alt backspace. Now that looks pretty good and we're beginning to see the shape of those pieces much nicer now. All I've really got to do is to decide if I'm going to put any texture or I'm going to adjust that neutral grey. Maybe we can come back to that in a moment. But what I could also do is just add a little bit of design, if you like, to the pieces we've cut out. So let me select each of them in turn. Let me pick up the one here by holding the control key and clicking. So there it is selected that's the piece that comes from here but what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it slightly because they wouldn't all be sitting there perfectly the right way would they so I'm going to hit Control T which brings up the free transform 
so I can just move outside the box and I can just rotate these pieces a little bit hit the enter key and then I can move them into a position and well let me go ahead and do exactly the same with the other four pieces now as you can see here I've lightened my background just a little bit and I've added 10% of Gaussian monochrome noise if you look carefully you can just see I've lost that computer generated look and it looks quite nice now if you think your jigsaw puzzle pieces and your puzzle need a little bit more shape around the edge or a drop shadow then you need to select one of them go back into your effects make your adjustment by double clicking and then you need to copy it to all the other layers not going to take a great deal of time here but of course we've got one last thing to do the rest of the image doesn't have the jigsaw puzzle effect now that's going to be fairly easy to achieve if we go up to the jigsaw layer at the top of the stack and turn it on and then go to our blend modes we need to choose multiply you'll notice there's one or two lines I've got to erase here but that really isn't a problem to do that I'll just turn off all of those layers apart from this one I'll zoom in and I can use my eraser the same as I did before I'll just make my brush a little bit bigger there you can see be very careful when you go near the pieces but after that it becomes pretty easy and you could make your brush a little bigger just to wipe all of these edges that you don't want away and once we've done that we can turn on the remainder of those layers to finish the image not forgetting that we looked at some paper textures in a previous video if we select the background layer here and I go to my windows menu and my extensions Adobe paper texture pro maybe we could find something here which provides a better backdrop I'm looking for something quite pale let's have a look at this one maybe something like that but we're all going to choose something slightly different even that works quite well too and there we can see the final result that I've settled on